This is episode 29 of the Just Get Started podcast, and my guest today is the founder of Pursuit.com and host of the new Mindset Who Dis podcast, Case Kenny. Let's get started. <laughs> Hey gang, and welcome to another episode of the Just Get Started podcast. I'm your host, Brian Andreco, and thanks again for being a part of this journey where we talk with people from all across the globe, all different walks of life, but people that are really trying to go after and get it and, and want to be fulfilled in life. And sometimes that's with a new career they achieve or uh, a business they start. Other times it's a side hustle that they're doing away from their full-time job. And then other times it's just doing different things or new things. It might be hobbies or trying to get in the best shape of their life, um, whatever it might be. The whole goal here, though, is that this community that I'm trying to build is really folks that are motivated to think differently than what it was from yesteryear of like, oh, we go to a job, nine to five, I come home, I bitch and moan about it, I go back the next day. I don't want that. I don't want you guys to have that. Um, certainly, if you, I love my full-time job and, and we'll keep doing it. Um, I love doing this as well. And this is something that I decide to do and take up my free time with. When other people, they choose to watch five hours of Netflix, fine, go do it. I'm not telling you not to do that. Um, but folks that actually want to say, hey, you know what? I want to find different things or new avenues that might get me fulfilled in life and, and test those a little bit. Um, this is really the podcast for you guys to listen in on. And I appreciate the ones that have, have have been listening in and giving me some great feedback. If you're new to this, I think you're going to really enjoy it going forward. Um, I have a variety of different guests and really from, again, all different walks of life. There's, there's no kind of cookie cutter guests that I have. They're just interesting people that I find interesting um, that I'm curious to learn more about and, and really think that they can provide some good insight of their journeys, the ways they've been successful, maybe hurdles or obstacles they've overcome. And things you can take and kind of help you guys sharpen the saw a little bit quicker um, as you go along. So, you know, it's one of those things that, um, I, I, you know, interviewing is something for me that's really interesting. I, I talked with Case on the podcast today a little bit about this. And, you know, he does a platform for his podcast where it's him talking and providing insight. And that's awesome. Um, I actually decided to do an interview platform because I love interviewing people. It's something I always enjoyed. I actually... Growing up, one of my favorite shows to watch was Regis and Kathy Lee. Uh, for the youngins out there that don't know who Regis Philbin is, go go Google uh, his name. He was awesome. He was he was a legend. And to this day, I love watching whether it's you know David Letterman's special on Netflix or you know it's uh, Dan Patrick show I like listening to or um, it could be even Bill Maher. He's kind of one of my favorites and um, would would some to love love day to talk with him uh, someday. Uh, but stuff like that, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. You know, it, it's funny. The stuff that I do spend time listening and learning and, and gaining knowledge, a lot of it is interview-type platforms. So um, anyways, that's why I do this and, and really enjoy talking to different individuals and learning and really to give back to you guys listening that hopefully you can really scrap a couple uh, thoughts through it, have some entertainment along the way, and um, really come out of it saying, hey, you know what? I learned a couple things. This is an interesting interesting person. Maybe you start following them going forward. Um, maybe you listen to some uh, additional episodes to say, hey, what other guests are going to be on here? What are additional uh, learnings will I get? So I appreciate you guys being involved in the community here. I'm really grateful for it. You know, 29 episodes in. It's been almost a year to the day where I launched this thing around Thanksgiving uh, last year. So just incredible what the last year, um, ha what's kind of happened um, and how this uh, podcast has progressed and looking forward to kind of continuing it going forward. So if you guys have been listening to this or maybe this is your first time, the only way I'm going to grow this and build a community is for you guys to share your feedback. One of the best ways to do that is online, um, whether it's iTunes or Google Play, wherever you guys are listening. Please share the feedback. Please write a review. Give it a star rating. Um, I really appreciate that, to hearing your insight and feedback. Um, that, that's really helpful for me. So if you guys don't mind taking a second, either now pause it or you know after you're done listening, and just go ahead and do that and get it out of the way, that would really mean a lot to me. Um, with that being said, 
Well, let's transition to the episode today um, and my guest, Case Kenny. Uh, besides Case is having one of the coolest names ever, um, Case is doing some really interesting things where using a lot of content, both written word, he has his podcast. Um, and being able to kind of promote that. So, you know, he was a sales professional by trade, um, transitioned into, and still doing that actually, but transitioned into growing these media companies. Um, you can f- find Case online, by the way. Uh, pursuit.com is one of the best ways to get in touch with him. That's P R S U I T.com. Um, go check him out on Instagram, case.kenny. So, C A S E, period. K-E-N-N-Y. Um, so check them out there as well. But puts out a lot of great content, um, really motivation inspiring type of work. Um, really how, how to get people again, similar, you know, him and I talk about this in the podcast, there's some similarities uh, between him and I, which is kind of cool. But just, you know, how do we continue to um, do different things in our life and not be settled in what we're doing today and always want to achieve that greatness for tomorrow. So I think you guys will enjoy the work that he puts out and uh, some of the neat stuff. He's got a phenomenal following. Um, his new mindset who dis podcast is like a top 50 iTunes podcast. Uh, pretty incredible stuff. Pursuit.com if you go to it. Um, he sends a daily email. Um, he's been doing it and we talk about this. I don't want to steal the thunder but he basically wrote an article for 30, or excuse me, 30, geez, that'd be a long time, um, three straight years um, every single day. So some neat stuff, again, he's doing. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the uh, interview I have today with him, and we'll continue to check out some of his work um, going forward. But without further ado, let's jump into my conversation with Case Kenny. Let's get it started. Hey, Case, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining today. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm excited to, to chat. Yeah, this is great, man. I'm glad to uh, have you on and talk a little about your journey and uh, some of the stuff I've been following for you recently. I'm kind of excited for you to share this with the audience and and some of the things that you're doing. Um, One of the things I want to start out with, and and I always like to do in this format is, you know, you didn't get to where you are today just by sheer luck. You know, you woke up yesterday type thing. It's probably been a culmination of a lot of things throughout your life. So I'm curious if we can start out the story here. Can you share with everyone maybe a little about your upbringing, um, you know, your childhood. Was it normal? Was it you know, just random stuff going on? And then we'll kind of start piecing the the things together as we go along. But maybe that's a good starting point for us to uh, get into this thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think I think in this case, it's kind of like a good contrast. I mean, yeah, normal upbringing, great mother, father. I have a brother, um, very smart guy. Uh, always, we were always raised, you know, to be very creative, but on pretty traditional career paths. My brother went to Harvard. He's a doctor now, very smart. My mother was a lawyer, my father, a consultant, like very, uh, pretty standard career paths, but always encouraged us to be creative. I went to university of Notre Dame, which was great. I graduated, thought I wanted to be a lawyer, found out I didn't really want to do that. Then got into marketing, started working at some ad agencies here. Pretty, pretty typical stuff, to be honest. Um, I was always like a voracious reader and writer. My mother was an author. Um, so definitely had that 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 desire to create, but kind of within the guardrails of you know a traditional traditional career path. Never really had the desire to influence or like you know kind of really stand out. Uh, but that I think that's like the pivot point. That's kind of the point of contrast for my life. Um, you know, kind of you know I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. Really, I wasn't that kid that had a lemonade stand. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, you're you're either born an entrepreneur or you're not. Uh, that kind of thing. I kind of disagree with that. I've, I think I've evolved into being an entrepreneur from the fact that I love to create. So like, you know, um, you know, started working a typical nine to five in Chicago and then kind of realized that I, you know, through that path, I was missing that creative flair. I wasn't writing anymore. I wasn't reading as much as I wanted to. I wasn't doing anything with my hands. I wasn't really doing anything. So I started a blog just kind of as that creative outlet. And then uh, I can go into all the details you want there if you want, but fast forward basically from that starting point of that blog, realizing that you can create something within the guardrails of your nine to five, build it up. So not only does it have influence, but you can monetize it from there. I founded a media company. I founded um, my consulting group, uh, my podcast, a bunch of other things just from that starting point of just starting to create something with no expectations around it. And then, you know, that was five years ago. So I'm 30 now. So call it 25. 
you know, between the ages of 25 and 30 is really where I kind of came into my own, both as an individual, but also as an entrepreneur, as an influencer, as a creative person, as a writer, as an author. Um, but it all, it definitely started with just that idea of I'm not completely fulfilled right now in my job. Let me start with something that I know really lights a fire within me from a creative standpoint. Let me see if that's a business, you know, that was kind of my thought process. If that answers your question. No, that's no, that's great, man. And I'm, I want to unpack a few different things there because yep. uh, I think that can get us into the uh, deep down in the well. Um, first, I want to start off with the well, I could take on a few different tangents. Let's start off with the, the family um, first, because, you know, when I hear, you know, dad, or their dad was a lawyer, right? Your brother's doctor. And there's a lot of um, kind of the high professional um, kind of achievements there. When you first said to them, hey, I'm going to yeah, I, I like the nine to five type thing, but I'm going to start doing this other thing. How were those conversations received? Was it well supported? Was it, are you, are you crazy? Like, what, 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 I'm curious of what that dynamic was. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, well supported in the, you know, admiration for my desire to be creative, but concerns that it's not financially sustainable uh, there. I think, you know, my parents are, are pretty conservative in that sense. Um, you know, People treat money in different ways. Like I think my family, like a lot of families, is, is very focused on saving and, you know, uh, kind of preparing for the worst. So the the possibility of me being solely reliant on like making money from a block or something definitely wasn't something that they necessarily expected, but also something that they had concerns about for sure. I think luckily for me, that conversation was was well received just because I was pretty smart about how I've gone about creating businesses and that I write about it a lot. I speak a lot about it in the sense that my businesses have always grown from being side hustles. And that allows for, you know, to maintain that financial security um, that you have from a traditional nine to five while siphoning off value from both ends to make you more successful in general. So the fact that I approached it that way and wasn't like, hey, I'm quitting on Tuesday, I'm going to start a blog. Like to me, I don't think that's that smart. I think I have a lot of admiration for people who do that kind kind of thing who quit their job and then focus on their passion. I, I say kudos to you, but I'm a pretty realistic person. I like things. I like my lifestyle. I want to be able to support myself. And I'm not, you know, I, I think that was a much smarter way to go about it because it allowed me to dip my toe in the water and just be pragmatic. Um, but it, it, it taught me a lot. So like, that's the way that I always recommend. And that conversation, with my family, it, it went, a, it went a lot better there. Not that, you know, Obviously, I respect my my family. Not that I necessarily was looking for their blessing, but uh, it helped across the board because you're you're essentially testing yourself to make sure it's it's right for you before you dive head first. Well, and one of the things that you know I was appreciative of is as we kind of you know as I, I was doing some research on this is we have some similar backgrounds in the fact of you know and I'm trying to do the side hustle, um, but you know we kind of a, a, as a sales professional myself, I'm curious your thoughts. Why did you get into sales? out of college like why was that the path to go on if you can start here and then we'll kind of dive into the side hustle part of it yeah now i love that question that's like, that's like like the perfect transition point uh so i so out of college i started working at an agency it wasn't in sales initially i did like three years in like strategic and analyst roles and then honestly if i'm being candid i wanted to get into sales because i wanted to make more money <laughs> if i'm being candid I, I looked at the sales within the ad tech marketing industry i was like these dudes have the same skill set as me. We do the same thing, but they're making tenfold what I'm making. I was like, that the, I, my ROI for my time isn't here. So I was like, well, I would gladly do sales. I'm doing, I'm getting fulfillment from the fact that I'm working in the same space. I'm doing the same strategic elements. Why not go and incentivize yourself with a little bit more hustle and grind and potentially get considerably more ROI for your skill set and your time? So that was originally why I did it. And then as I continued to go down that that path, I realized a couple things. One, how important I think it is for anyone in their life to do sales at one point. At some point, I always say that I think everyone should wait tables and do sales in their life at, at some point because it just teaches you so much. Like I worked at Applebee's when I was in high school. And like just the experiences from that, from customer service to being able to juggle a million things to the stress, I think that's taught me a lot. And then sales has taught me so much about myself. Like it, it, it was nerve wracking. I never thought I was that outgoing or that confident and I like had the ability to have a goal and get paid out on a goal. And, and then from there to manage a team and like all this stuff that I never thought I'd be able to do. And, you know, then to be able to do it and not just do it, but be great at it. 
Like it, it taught me so much about myself. Um, and then, you know, from there, like being in sales is like a gateway, a gateway to being an entrepreneur. Cause when you're in sales, like you're, you're branding yourself, you're selling products creatively, you're, you're doing business development type things. You're doing revenue operations type things, you know, depends on the sales role, I'm sure. But like my experience, I was doing everything. I was, I was, it was basically I was my own startup working for this company. So it was like the perfect gateway to be like, wow, if I can, you know, sell $4 million of this SaaS product myself, like I know what it takes to go from prospecting to follow up to proposal to close to, you know, upsell to cross sell, like all that kind of thing. Like I could, if I could do that for this company, I could do it for my own company. And like, it just, it just gave me balls to, to continue doing what I was doing on the side. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that 100%. I think from a sales standpoint, you're running your own business type thing. So I um, yep. certainly agree with that. And and I could definitely see that where, yeah, you started giving that confidence that, hey, I can do this on my own. And I'm curious why, why was media, why was, and obviously you started, we'll get into the, the blog aspect where you kind of started writing content. I'm really curious about that. But yep. why did you go on that for your side hustle? You could have done any, anything. Why, why did you go down that path? Yeah, um, it's a it's a good question. I mean, I went down that path one just because um, you know very interested in like in in reading and writing at at the most basic point. But like my idea was like if I'm going to do a side hustle, I want to be realistic, pragmatic, and just smart about it. Like since the fact that I was working in media, I was working in advertising. I th- and I and I love that space. I think it would be great to leverage the skills that I'm learning, the network that I'm expanding upon in my nine to five and create and leverage that in a side hustle that's aligned so that when I'm working during the day, it's helping my skill set for night. And when I'm working at night, it's it's fulfill it's it's helping me increase my skill set for the day. So it's like this perfect circle of harmony between skill sets, networks, and experiences. Like I I think if I was working at, you know, JP Morgan and uh, was, you know, really enthusiastic about uh, fishing and started a fishing app, like it just would have been, it would be really tough to balance that because the skill sets aren't necessarily aligned. There certainly isn't a whole lot of opportunity to overlap, but here I am working in advertising, working with brands on how to create content that resonates with certain audiences. And then I have this passion for writing. I can create my own platform and learn. It was like everything just kind of gelled together. And then you take the sales aspect and it's perfect. Not only do you have the intangibles, but you have the tangibles and like everything just works really well for me. And I think I got lucky. I think a lot of people would be like, ah, I couldn't do that. That would be forcing it. I have this passion, but I work here and it just doesn't align. I definitely think I am kind of an outlier in that sense that I was able to find two passion areas that did overlap. But you could find a scenario where your skill sets help each other nine to five versus side hustle. Like that's the perfect equation in my opinion what what made you decide to write because i if i if i read correctly correct me if i'm wrong on this but you wrote like an article like every day for like a couple of years is that right yeah yeah i mean pursuit uh if we're talking about pursuit which is the daily newsletter that i run that goes out to like 130,000 people that i i yeah, initially in the first three years, I was creating content every single day for it, or at minimum editing content from our contributor base. Um, we've since pivoted a little from that model. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty nuts. My output over the past couple of years has been uh, kind of mind boggling. <laughs> do you think it's more so do you think it's that consistent? You know, I've heard this a lot from other folks on the podcast that consistency has been the key for them. It's it's not just putting out an article here and there and hoping to kind of get that virality and get lucky but it's that consistency over time and building that base. Is that where you think you've had that growth in, in the companies over the last few years by doing um, that? I, I think, yeah, consistently, consistency for sure. But at the same time, honestly, if we're speaking about, you know, growth of a business, of my business from a revenue standpoint, like it was a low six-figure business on that model. This past year, like this time last year, I did a big pivot for the business, moved it from a blog to a daily newsletter, kind of like the skim for the sake of comparison. And it was that pivot that blew us up. It, we blew up. Um, and, you know, consistent in my effort, but pivot towards the product. And that was what was really strategic. And looking back, I wish I had made that pivot two years sooner, if I'm being honest. Uh, I learned a lot in the process. But yeah, it, it's a combination of the two. Being you know, vigilant in your consistency and your output, but checking your pride enough to know that you know, successful business 
is, is, is full of pivots. I don't know many people who launched a, a business that has had the same vision for its entire lifetime. Like it, your business is going to pivot. You just have to be willing to do it. And that's what really enabled us to take off. Like our, our success has really been the past 12 months. Like it took three years to get to this point. And now we're, now we're churning and burning, but I learned a lot, obviously, before that. Why didn't you, why didn't you pivot two years ago? Why didn't I pivot two years ago? Uh, probably stubbornness. Probably, um, I don't think I was really looking at the business from the right perspective. Like, where where were we doing things? Like, where were we excelling and where were we not doing well? Like, I wasn't really looking. I was just so focused on creating content, which is great. And again, I was kind of in that hobbyist mindset, not really the entrepreneurial mindset. And I just like kind of cut the BS. I was like, is this a hobby or am I a business person? Okay. Well, you look at our numbers, you look at what we're creating. It's, it's a hobby. Like, you know, a hundred K is great money, but it's not, if you're starting a business, like you need to be putting out seven, eight figures in my opinion. And again, I come from a, a world and a network of people who are just high performers. So I'm a little bit biased, but like, I was like, it's not good enough for me. I hold myself to high standard. If, if this is a hobby, then let's call it a hobby. If it's a business, then we need to do something about it. And it was kind of that, that switch in my mind, a little bit of a gut check. And then from there, I was like, okay, well, let's take a step back. Like, where, where am I doing good things? Where am I not doing good things? Where is our audience? Where is the engagement? And most important, where is the potential to further monetize? And it was like a combination of those thoughts. I was like, all right, let's do this. Let's pivot. Let's rock out. And that's kind of how I got to this point, at least. I always ask this. So if you could have done it again, would you have two years ago, would you have made the pivot or the learning that you've had over the last two years or do you accept like, Hey, that's helped me. And that will help me going forward better than if I did happen to get lucky and make the pivot two years ago. I, I, accept, I accept it. You know, uh, I, I think, I, I think I learned a lot. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I would have liked to move the timeline up, but I think if I look back and we like looked at every, every week during that time, I'm sure I learned something every week. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I wish I was a little bit younger. Sure. Uh, but no, I, I, I accept it. I think it's, it's part of the process. I think maybe surrounding myself with people who would have encouraged me to check my pride a little bit. I think I was pretty, um, you know, stubborn and, and proud of what I was doing rather than being realistic. And now I'm a pretty realistic person. I think that would have been helpful, but yeah, I, I wouldn't trade it. What, and I'm curious on this, like folks that are trying to get out there and this is kind of a, almost a two parter is one what would be maybe a, some advice to give someone that's kind of on the edge thinking about, yeah, I want to, whether it's start a business or again, maybe it's just a hobby to get into a business down the road, maybe to get them over the edge to start. And then secondly, because you're doing a few different things with the podcast, written content, is there one yep. over the other that you like, or was it hard for you to what, like for maybe to speak on a podcast? Was that hard for you up front? And then you warmed up to it? Or are you pretty straightforward with that at the beginning? I'm, I'm kind of curious, those things, especially at the beginning stage, how you got over some of those maybe initial hurdles or fears. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my advice would be to get the heck off the edge. Like you're either in or you're out. And I think the biggest thing is like people like, Oh, I would love to do this or that. And like, I just have no patience for those conversations anymore. Like I'm not trying to be mean, but like when people have that conversation, I'm like, okay, well, if that's the case, then you don't want to do it. Or you have some fear that you're suppressing that's holding you back. It's like, I, I, if you're making excuses like oh, I don't have the time or I don't know where to start, like those are kind of BS type things. I, I really learned it's like people are like, oh, I'm just an aspiring artist. And I, I talk about it on my podcast all the time. It's like if you're doing the thing, even if you're not any good at it, you are an artist. You're not an aspiring anything like people like, oh, I'm an aspiring entrepreneur. What do you like if you're started something you're not aspiring anymore? You're doing it, you know, so I, like I would always have that mentality. And then I would just as cliche as it is to say, you know, you just need to start. Obviously, you believe that. And I, I think it's it's true. But people correlate that with, oh, you know, just getting started means raising a, a series A round, or it means getting a, 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 tie, a headline in Forbes, like it doesn't mean that at all. It literally means if you have been talking to your buddies about starting an app, but you don't know where to start, or you're not sure if you have the time, like it starting literally is on a Saturday sitting down and writing out the, the concept, writing out some branding points, writing out a to-do list, like that's starting. And I think people would be amazed what happens when you do that, how much it can kickstart momentum, how much little things add up, little things like that, little things like researching, little things like taking little action steps, buying a domain, little silly little things like that add up over time until you're like, well, I, I have all these pieces, like I'm, I'm actually moving. 
So like, I would just encourage people to, you know, <laughs> be more active, not so passive. Like people expect like they're going to have an aha moment. Like I, I've never had an aha moment, really. I, maybe this past year when I realized the effectiveness of, of email marketing. But outside of that, it, it wasn't like, oh, holy cow, like I'm, I'm going to start a business. No, it was like, ah, you know, I've been writing for a bit. I wonder if people like it. Oh, yeah, it looks like some people read this. Okay, well, what if I started doing it more frequently? Oh, that's cool. What if I started reaching out to advertisers because I have a big audience? All right, right on. Okay, maybe I should form a, a, a media group around this to house some other entities. Okay, cool. Like that's how it starts. It, it's unless you're an entrepreneur from day one and you've been selling lemonade and you have a, a plan and you need to raise capital. Like it's not going to happen like that. It's going to happen slowly but surely, but it's all going to start with just sitting down, stop making excuses and actually just putting in a little bit of work. And then I think it'll, it'll kickstart from there. That's awesome. I, I appreciate you going hard to the paint on that advice. <laughs> People need to hear that. Yeah. Um, what is, and, and again, this may be your, you didn't pivot potentially answer, but what's kind of been the biggest failure you've had in, in, in your kind of career? And let's say after college, it could have been before college, I guess, but kind of after college in this career professional world you've been in, any, any big yeah. failures that come to mind that you've learned a ton from? Yeah. I mean, I've been asked that question a lot and I, I honestly can't think of like a specific incidence because I've failed a lot, but to me, like they were all just means to, to pivot or to learn something else. And I know that's kind of a glance off answer, but like, I truly believe that. Like I can think of so many deals that I haven't gotten at, at the sales job that I've been referencing um, meetings that I've absolutely crashed and burned and like was just horrible. And like, I could, I could think of those specific instances and those are failures, but like, I could then counter that with how I'm so glad I did it. Like for every example, for example, I remember my, one of my first sales meetings was with this entire group of, of digital investment people at an agency here, like 20 people went into the meeting. I didn't realize that I would be running it because I really didn't know anything, but my CRO at the time thought it would be a good idea to just throw me into the fire to see how I would react. And I failed and it was horrible. But like, now I know that feeling um, I know it'll never happen again. And I, but I also know that it wasn't the end of the world. Like I didn't spontaneously combust on the spot. Like I didn't melt. I didn't die. I'm fine. So like that's made me a stronger presenter, a stronger salesperson, more confident in myself, like all these different things. Um, so I, honestly, like that's my answer and that, you know, there's a ton of times and I, you know, was told no, was told fail, like all these different things. But like, to me, like those are, that's the, a small puzzle piece that's now allowed me to take that and be a stronger seller or with pursuit when I like maybe uh, took on an advertiser and didn't perform well for them. Well, that was a failure, but now I know what kind of advertisers work really well for pursuit, what kind of deals I do want to take, what kind of deals I don't want to take. Like those are necessary because you're going to learn it eventually. You may as well earn it, learn it early on. That's kind of my mentality towards it. Yeah, and speaking of learning, is there... Um... I don't know, certain things, I, where do you gain your knowledge? Do you listen to other podcasts? Do you read books? Do you go to in-person conferences? Is there certain things that you do to keep acquiring knowledge and, and kind of put some more arrows in your quiver, if, if you will? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, to me, it's it's an interesting balance for me because we haven't talked about my podcast yet, but my podcast is, is something I'm really passionate about and it's, it's growing and, and increasingly popular, which is great. But I try not to listen to a whole lot of other similar podcasts uh, for a variety of reasons, but mostly because uh, I want to be my own self. I want to have my own original thoughts. And I find that the more that I listen to other similar podcasts in the self-development space, the more I find myself just rehashing what other people say. And I really, really, really don't want to do that. One, it doesn't help me grow. And two, it certainly doesn't offer that much value to a listener. Like I want original thoughts. So I found myself not doing that that much. Um, uh, I, but I, I read a ton. I read a ton. I write a ton for pursuit specifically. And that's an all day, every day thing. So I think the majority of the knowledge that I'm, I'm taking in is, is uh, written like other people's blogs, the internet. I'm a big YouTube guy. I love watching YouTube. Um, and I think from there, I'm not, I wouldn't call it knowledge so much. I call it perspective. Like, just watching any of the vloggers that I follow on YouTube or just going down the YouTube rabbit hole. Like I just find that perspective to be really powerful. And even that's my whole thing. Even for pursuit, I have the the tagline perspective that inspires like that is my knowledge base. Perspective is, is knowledge in this day and age where knowledge is pretty ubiquitous and that you can Google anything and know it. 
perspective, though, is not perspective is earned through your own experiences. It's earned through that of others and absorbing that and talking to them and learning from them kind of secondhand. Um, so everything that I do is really garnered towards this idea of increasing my perspective bank. Um, and that's kind of actually, I've created all the content around that idea. And that pers- one, one perspective, one day can be the catalyst to something big for you. So I'm pretty hungry in that regard. Uh, but for me, yeah, it comes from from reading a lot because I am an author. I am a writer. Um, that really helps helps me on a lot of different levels. No, I'm, ju- I'm just curious because my mind just goes in a, a, a million different ways. You mentioned earlier a piece of back. So, do you think the writing did that come from? You said your mom was an author. Like, is that why you like writing so much, or you, you like reading stuff? Is do you think that was a piece to there or no? Or- I think so I think I mean she always encouraged me to read a lot. Um, but it's funny she like. I remember, you know, grad, I wrote for the school newspaper, Notre Dame, came right out, started a blog. And I was like, mom, like, I'm going to be an author. I'm going to write a great book. And she was like, Case, I have no doubt that you will be. At one point, you have the skill set, you have the storytelling ability, but you're not going to be. I was like, wow, that's kind of mean. She's like, you're not going to be until you get more life experiences and perspective to write about. And that was her whole thing. And I really do believe that, like, to be a great author, to be a great writer, to be a great blogger, vlogger, anything that's creative, lean forward, it has to be reflective of your own experiences. I can't say, I'm not going to say, like, oh, you can't be 20 and be a great writer. I'm just saying it's not as powerful as someone who has more perspective in life that they can reflect on. So I've always went by that mentality, and I'm pretty patient towards what I'm working on and that I know the power of perspective, which is why, like, I'm 30 before this past year, I never really brought Case Kenny forward. I was always, it was always pursuit and that was it. Now it's pursuit. Oh, Case Kenny runs pursuit. Oh, new mindset. Who this? Oh, that's that iTunes top 50 podcast that Case Kenny runs. Like these are things that I was pleasant. I was fine being behind the scenes, but now that I feel that I have more perspective that is value valuable, I'm happy to bring that forward. Whereas before I was like, Hey, I know I'm a great writer. I know I have the power of word, but like there's no substance behind it. So I wanted to be patient. So like, that's kind of my mentality towards creating. And like, now I'm at a point where I think I've, I've had enough life experiences that I have not only, you know, power of the pen, but also substance behind it such that it is valuable to anyone that's listening or reading. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a, that's a, that's a good story there. So she were kicking the pants maybe for mom and that always helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about the podcast for a minute. Be, one, I'm curious, where did you come up with a name for it? Yeah, so I I actually came up with that. uh, I've been using that for about a year in marketing material for Pursuit, New Mindset, Who Dis, and the idea that, oh, you know, I read Pursuit. It's all about self-development. You're coming back at me with this old stuff. It's like, nah, New Mindset, Who Dis. I'm a a better person. I'm a more improved person. I'm a powerful person. I'm a badass human. Like, that was the idea. So I sat down. I was like, I need a podcast idea. I was like, well, I've, I've had it for a long time. It's called New Mindset, Who Dis. And I really like it because it kind of explains what the podcast is about without really explaining it. So uh, it's worked. It's worked really well. And it's kind of, you know, kind of Gen Z millennial nomenclature. So it, it appeals to the right audience as well. So kind of two birds, one stone right there. Yeah. Why did you, the, the podcast, do you like, I mean, obviously you like doing it, but in terms of the structure of it, how did you start going with that format? I'm just curious a little bit of, of the whole podcast start for you. Yeah, uh, I love the format. Um, I love being able to write like I normally do, but being able to write in a in a spoken way, which is a little bit more casual, a little bit more me, whereas sometimes it's hard to express your full personality in writing unless you're really, really, really talented in that regard. For me, I was like, this is great. Not only can I continue to influence as a writer, but then I could turn it into Case Kenny. And I was excited about that. I was also excited about, you know, just challenging myself to be a better spoken person, be able to, you know, just focus on that skill set. And then also my podcast, um, I do it two, three times a week and it's 20, 20 minute episodes and it's just me. I typically don't do guests on it, although I might do that in the future. And my reasoning behind that was, I was like, I listen to a lot of podcasters and sometimes I find that podcasters, they rely on their guests to basically brand the podcast for them. There's nothing wrong with that. But I was like, I want to challenge myself to be the brand, to put the onus of the success of my podcast on myself, not on the guests who I bring on. So like for me to people to tune in because Case Kenny has something valuable to say, not, oh, Case Kenny has so-and-so on the show today. Now it'll be interesting. Like I wanted it to 
I wanted to challenge myself to always have something valuable, interesting, well-spoken to say. And then not only that, but to grow it, like to be able to get people to tune in day after day after day. Like I wanted that challenge. Um, and that humbly, I think I've done a pretty good job of it. I mean, it's an iTunes top 50 pretty regularly. I've had over a thousand five-star reviews just in the first three, four months. Like it's done really well because I think I've stuck to that and really refused to, to kind of bend on that. So I'm excited. It's, it's really fulfilling for me. It checks a lot of boxes of things that I'm, I'm looking to do. Plus like podcasting this year, next year, 2020, like it's, it's blowing up. Like more and more people are turning in the podcast. It's like a new kind of, that's not a new medium by any means, but it's an exciting medium that people are really leaning into. So I'm excited for the future of it for sure. Yeah. Are you, are you bullish at all on the, um, from an audio standpoint, and this obviously gets talked about a lot, but like with Alexa voice and all that stuff, or have you looked into that at all in terms of, you know, using that as a different means, I guess, than, than obviously a normal listening on the you know iPhone type podcast? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've definitely, definitely thought about it. I, I think it's really interesting to see kind of the proliferation of those device uh, companies. I think podcasting, in, in general has a kind of a discovery malfunction and that there's no easy way for people to discover new podcasts. Pandora is rolling out um, so the podcast genome project potentially in July. That'll really help. But other than that, it's like iTunes and you have to know what you're looking for. But something like Alexa, Google Voice, where you could rely on its AI to help you find something, I think that's that's super exciting. Plus, it's just an easier way to consume. Like still on your iPhone, it's still very lean forward, which I like about podcasting is in that you can, you know, have an engaged audience, but something like that, that you have in your home that, you know, you can, you can leverage its automation to, to bring something to you that you may not know. Like that's, that's exciting. So like I said, I, I'm just excited about the entire new frontier 2019, 2020, 2021 for, for audio, for podcasting, for just creators that are in, in that field in general. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it does seem exciting over the next few years where it's gonna, where it's going to go. So looking looking forward to being on that sure. rocket ship, so to speak. Um, yep. And how, on the I train guess, together. yeah, I mean, I guess the last question on the podcast for you, I'm curious, like, how did you? And is it just the audience you build over the last few years? And we talk about being obviously top fifty on iTunes and stuff. Did that just come again with putting out more content, branding properly? Where do you think the uh, where do you think that kind of came from? Yeah, I mean, it's it certainly helped to have pursuit to be able to have an Instagram with 145,000 followers, to have an email list of over 100,000, to have my personal brand of you know 15,000 or whatever, to be able to on launch day, put that out. That was very helpful. And that obviously helped me rank in the, in the top charts very quickly. Uh, but from there, there, from there, obviously it fades away, right? You build excitement. It's like a season premiere. And then it's like, then truly like, who do you have hooked? Yeah, so from there, it was about consistency, those are just about bringing interesting content. Like I hate to be that guy. It's like, oh, it's all about the quality, but it really is. Like I've I've really really learned that. Like you can build as much hype as you want. You could be successful on day two, but are you going to be successful on day one hundred and two? And that's all dependent on the consistency. Certainly for podcasting, is setting a, a note in people's mind and that they know Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, there's going to be a new episode for them. Um, that's been really important. It's been really important just to ask my audience to do something like I want them to subscribe. If they're not subscribing, it's less likely that they're going to listen. So asking them to subscribe, asking my audience to, to give five star reviews, like there's no, nothing stronger than social proof in, in, in any aspect of marketing. So asking them to write a quick sentence review on iTunes now I have over a thousand, like asking them to do that has been really helpful. But they, they weren't going to do that unless the quality, the content was there, the quality was there. So that's obviously it goes full circle. It goes back to that. You have to you have to be interesting. You have to offer value. It's a, it's a diluted space. There's a lot of people podcasting, but there's not a whole lot of people doing it the way I do it, I think, which is no guests, a uh, little bit uh, cynical, a very vulnerable, a little bit of humor here and there. Like I, I've tried to pick different elements that allow me to, to communicate uh, more authentically. So Again, those are buzzwords. I get it, but honestly, it's it's the truth. I used to host a podcast where I was. It was a dual dual co-host, and we had guests on, and it did well. But it only did as well as the quality of the guests. And I think that's that's great and that's exciting. But that's not what I'm looking for. I want to challenge myself to be my brand, to have my voice be unique. Um, so I've just I've focused on that, and I've focused on that through the quality of the content. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And, and that's why I wanted to have you on. I listened to some of the episodes and, and I and I like that vulnerability. I mean, I think that's such a big thing nowadays where you can kind of speak your mind and you have your opinions and you, know, you back them up as well. So I think that's some great uh, stuff there. Definitely everyone should check out. And that's actually a good transition. Where can everyone find you online? Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's at case.kenny, K-E-N-N-Y. You find my podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever. It's called New Mindset Who Dis? Or you can just Google it, Google me you'll find me but i always respond to people on instagram that's like my preferred communication method give me a last you know kind of final parting words here for kind of the folks listening maybe any advice or any thoughts or something maybe to get them get them off the couch and and go after it just kind of curious any any final uh thing you like yeah to say? yeah i mean to back to what i was saying i think my biggest piece of advice for anyone if if you're listening and you're thinking about getting into entrepreneurship or not, or if you're, if you want to be a better person, you want to be reach your potential, you want to be happy, you want to be fulfilled. My advice for those groups are the same. It's that you need more perspective. Perspective is the most powerful thing I think you could have in the world. And not just perspective, but firsthand perspective, aka experiences. The more you can challenge yourself to be uncomfortable, the more you can challenge yourself to understand what other people are doing. That's what can be a catalyst to inspire you. For me to sit down and realize that Sam Parr over at The Hustle, another popular newsletter, was absolutely killing it. For me to see that and realize that I had that in myself, that boom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift pursuit to be email. For me to, to talk to um, someone that I met the other day who quit his job, moved to Bali, started this business, is hugely successful, like boom, wow, you know, you could do that. Or just anyone, like uh, talk to this person who I hadn't talked to in years, really timid, really unconfident. Talk to them now and they're just a boss. They command the room. They're funny. They're outgoing. It's like, wow, you really changed yourself. You can do that. Well, I can do that. That's the power of perspective in, in any sense. You just need to fill your head with more perspective. Uh, the most happy people I know, the most fulfilled people I know, the most successful people I know, their their foundational <laughs> success is because of all the perspective that they they have garnered and they're hungry for it. So that would just that would be my only advice is just be be hungrier for perspective. And that means seeking out more, reading more, listening more, meeting new people, traveling, just being uncomfortable in general. I think that that's the biggest catalyst for any change you're looking to make, whether that's personal or career or entrepreneurial. Yes, that's awesome, man. You and a lot, you and I align on a lot of similar thinking. So I appreciate Love you saying it. that. Like I said, pushing that out there because that is important for everyone. Um, I, I really enjoyed having you on here, man. It was great to chat with you and uh, learn a little bit more about your journey and where you guys are going with some stuff. So um, thanks yeah, again for sharing, that. and uh, and I do appreciate your time. For sure, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, thanks again for listening on this episode, and hope you join on the next. As always, you can find me online at my website, brianondraco.com as well as at Brian Andreco on Instagram and Twitter. Um, again, the last name is spelled O-N-D-R-A-K-O. Um, if you guys get a chance and you're loving the podcast, I certainly um, would, would love a review on uh, iTunes or Google Play. Um, would love five stars. If you don't give me five stars, tell me why. I'd love to improve the podcast for you guys. You can listen in um, each and every episode, but I also need some feedback to improve as well. So. Um, I appreciate any insight you guys have into that. Um, thanks again for listening on this one. Hope to see you next time and have a phenomenal day. Just get started.